Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, this is a, I guess this is my third video on um, using Vue.js and Amplify specifically with Ionic Framework. Uh, we built in the previous app, we integrated the, the Amplify UI components for authentication. We showed how to use the admin UI to put some sample data into the content. And we have the application where we're rendering a list of some content from the back. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to show how to, first of all, create a modal UI in Vue.js using Ionic Framework. And then using that modal, we will add data to the database and we will have it update our task list here. Uh, depending upon how long that takes, we'll try to also add in um, updating and deleting of the content. Otherwise, I'll split it up into a separate video. Don't like these videos go too long. So. Uh, before we move on to the code, please make sure you like and subscribe to the videos. Please make sure you share with your friends. I hear a lot of people saying they can't find a lot of Ionic and Vue content out here. And then they come to my they come to my channel like, wow, look at all this content. So please spread the word so people know that it's out there. All right, so let's get to the code. And also to save a bunch of time here for a lot of the Ionic stuff, I'm just going to cut and paste the code. I'm just going to paste the code in and kind of explain what I've done so you don't have to sit here and watch me type all of it. So the first thing we need to do is we already have a list of data here. We need a way to add the data. So let's start by adding the button up here on the top. So the way you add the button on the top, you need to go up here inside of your toolbar. And inside of your toolbar, you need to add the components. Sorry. Inside of your toolbar, you need to add the components for the button. And we want our button to kind of show to the left, to the right side of the screen. So the way to do that is we can use the ion buttons component along with the ion button component. So in once again, inside the toolbar, we have the code. And so we have the slot on the end. We need a new modal called a new function called show input modal. And then we have our button. So you can see our buttons appearing at the top. Let's go down and uh, create this function down here inside of our source code. First thing you need to make sure you do, let's um, add it down here. So functions and then Show input modal, and then it's saying, well, I don't know what that is, so let's create a const show input modal. And uh, there we go. So now we have our method. It's got an empty arrow function, so it's saying, let's see some code inside of there, so let's give it some code. And for the showing of the input modal, basically what we're going to do is we're going to hide and show a comp um, we're going to hide and show an ionic modal component. So let's start with creating the ref that we need to handle all that. So let's go up to the top here and underneath here, let's add another ref. So const show modal. And inside of that, we're going to do a ref. And our ref is going to have some values in it. Let's try to put some types in there. So let's say is open. And that is a Boolean. And, and then the data that we're going to get back from it. So we're going to say data, and we're just going to be loose from now. We're going to say any. So that's the shape of the data that we're looking for inside of this ref. And then, so let's close this off. Then now let's define it. And so is open, is open is false when we start up. And then we also have no data when we start up. Is that, uh, like that. Okay, now it's complaining because it's like, well, what's going on with show modal? It's declared. And so show modal is going to be used down here inside of our function. So when someone clicks the button and says they want to show the input, uh, show our modal dialog, we need to set this ref we just created appropriately. And so on show modal, so and the value is any. So what's going to happen is that up here in the top, when I first want to show the modal for new, I have no data to pass in. We're going to try to use the same show modal function for editing and creating. So on new, there's no data to pass in, so we set it to null. So let's go back down to our function. Where is it? It's right here. Let's put a little something on top so I can see the difference between, kind of find the breaks. All right, so there is no data. So if my value is equal to null, then um, I want to open the modal, my data is null. If, the, if I do have some value, I still want to open a modal, but my data is the value. I could probably clean this up easier, make it simpler, but sometimes it's just best to kind of lay it out so that it's kind of clear exactly what's going on. Now we have in place our method, which will set our ref. Let's put a comment here. So now 
we got to add this modal thing. So what's my error about? Oh, it's this slot. So let's add the. We're gonna add it to top or to bottom. Let's add it down here at the bottom. And so this is gonna be an ion modal. Uh, ion modal. Let's see, did it add it for me? Or do I gotta add it? So let's go down and add our ion modal. And let's go down here. So hide these down here to the bottom so they don't get in anyone's way. Clean this up a bit. And so we have the modal in. And then now you need to set need to set some properties on here. So for the modal to show, you have to, we're going to use our ref that we created, the is um, the show modal, and it has a property on it that's called is open. And so what we will do is here we'll say. We need to bind, so is open, and this will be bound to our show, show. And what's happened is I did not return it. So it's a new property. So these are, so up here, and then we need to add our new one, which is show modal. So now, excuse me, now when we get back up here to our code and we see our show modal, we're getting our types for is open. And so, um, if is open is true, then it'll show the modal. If not, it'll close the modal. So that's what we have for ion modal. And then what we want to do is we want to handle the on did dismiss. And then on did dismiss, we're going to say show modal is open equals false. So you could actually just drop all your code right here inside. But what I'm going to do is create a separate component to kind of manage um, the UI that's that's going to be supported for this and that component is go over here in here inside of views. Let's create my new view And let's go to it and like I said, let's just drop the code in So we have our new um, Component here Let's just walk through what we have for um, so at the top we have our ion header we have our title and then the content is really what it is. We have a, a series of ion item, ion label, and input types. So we have our input type for our photo, sorry, for our title. We have a description, which, which is a text area, it's three rows. We have a status, which is whether or not the thing's completed or not. And so what will happen is as you click the checkbox, we'll update the, the, uh, va the value status, whether or not it's true or false. We're saving a start date. Um, actually, we're not saving it, we're just displaying it um, because the start date will be set automatically when you create the object. And then the end date, also we're just displaying it because um, it will be set automatically. Um, and then we have our footer, which is where you can save the modal, you can save the data or you can cancel it. Um, here we're going to we're going to be emitting events for our closed modal event. I just did it in line here because we're all we're doing is passing null back, but we've created a separate function, save data, if we're actually going to save the data. So that's the template. Um, and so let's get into the code. I'm using TypeScript. And so one of the things that Vue 3 likes you to do, it likes you to clearly lay out what your properties are. And so the properties we support are initial data, which is if you're editing, initial data will be set. And then it also likes you to indicate what events you're emitting. And so we're going to emit a closed modal event. So that's what that is laid out. And then here we have the new view three format using the setups. We have to identify props because we have some props coming in and then we're using this context parameter here. And that's how we're getting access to emit inside. So when we set up the, the um, component here with our form data, uh, the first time in we get our form data, we're going to set the status to false. And then we're going to set the start date to whatever is the current date time. But then here, this is where if we were actually propped, if uh, if we were actually passed in some initial data, we'll reset this whole form data ref to, to take whatever initial data we passed in. So that's how we're going to be able to use this form for editing the object and for also creating an object. So when creating the object, this initial data will be empty. So the only thing that will be set is status will be set to false and the start date will be set to the current date and time. Okay. The, this thing only does two things. It sets up data and then it saves data. And so here, um, when we save the data, what we're doing is if you're indicating in the component that the status is true, we're going to set the end date for you. Um, otherwise, we just take all the data out of the form and we're going to pass it back on the emit event. And so, as I said, on the closed modal, if there's actually data to be saved, it'll get passed back as opposed to up here, if the user hits cancel, we just pass back null. 
So let's save this and um, let's go back to our home view and let's try and add our new component we just created. And what do we call the entry form? And then entry form, we need to handle our closed modal. And I think we want to call, I think I try to use a consistent, no, let's see, is it on close or it's handle? It's handle. Handle, close, modal. And then we also want to handle initial data if initial data is passed in. So let's uh, make sure we set this property right. So initial data, once again, we're binding this, right? So initial data, I and I, T, initial data will be set to our show modal and then our, the data. So remember in our show modal we handle two things. We handle is it open in the data and so we're going to pass in the data. Uh, so this is complaining because it needs our handle close modal function. Let's save that. So let's add our handle close modal function. First of all, we can return it. So there's our handle from the closed modal, and then clearly it wants to see something. So let's hop up here and do const handle closed modal. Let's save that. So now, what's it complaining about? Cannot resolve components entry form entry form view components entry form view no it's not in components why did it assume it was in components it's in there you go okay now let's just think compile all right it's looking for some types so let's add some types this es lint sometimes gets annoying but let's keep it happy let's just set them both to any and any All right, so first of all, let's just see if our modal and everything shows up. So let's do a new. So we get our modal, let's so our cancel, close. Hmm. My cancel is not closing. So let's see. So if I go up here, emit close modal, and then go back to my home view, and on my modal, let's walk through this. My closed modal calls handle. Oh, I didn't do anything inside of handle closed modal. So let's go inside of handle closed modal and do something so it can actually close the modal. So yeah, here's handle closed modal and nothing's happening in there. Got distracted by trying to address those compiler errors. So let's see, what do we want to do in a closed modal? Um, the first thing that we can do just to make sure that it opens and closes properly is um, let's just close it. So we will just hop in here. And we know this is how you close the modal from the on to dismiss. So when we get our closed modal, uh, our closed modal, our closed modal, we will just close it. So let's say new, cancel, modal's close, new, save, use the same behavior because all we're doing is closing the modal. Okay, now we want to handle the condition of where I actually have some data that's coming back. And so for just to keep it simple, we'll call our data payload, set the type to any. Okay, and so down here we're going to handle that condition. So if payload, then we want to do something if we actually got some data back. And what we are going to do is uh, we'll just paste this in and kind of walk through it. Um, first, let's wrap this with try catch. So we're going to do some async stuff here. We want to catch any errors if they happen. All right, that's the first thing. And then let's go up here and add the async in preparation. And so what we're going to do is we are just going to have a function called create data, create data. And we're going to pass it whatever the payload is. And that should save the data. And if we have an error, we're just going to alert, you know, alert you dot message to kind of catch whatever the message is. And we're going to, we're going to have a separate function for create data to handle because the one we want to create and one we want to update. So let's just create a, so we're just going to have a separate function for to create data because it's pretty straightforward. So let's do this and um, right up above here. This is the create data function. Um, Amplify makes it simple. We just get our data store object. We call save. 
create a new object, which is our task object, and we're passing in all these fields that it needs, and that should create the new entry. So let's try out our, our create data. And this returns a promise, so let's do a wait. You're doing a IT on this guy, and let's give it a go. First, okay, so we have our entry added. We're not dynamically updating this yet, so let's refresh and see if we got it. And here's our first from UI. So let's let's um, automatically update this data. There's a way to actually actually subscribe to changes in your data so that you can get real-time updates. And so let's show how that works before we start adding, um, editing, and deleting to this code. Okay, so um, as you saw, when we added the object, we had to refresh the screen to get the data to show. Um, Amplify provides a cool way for you to kind of listen to changes from uh, the data store. We're gonna just keep it simple. We're just gonna subscribe to any changes whatsoever. And on those changes, we're gonna call our get data model to update the data. So let's go back down into our on mounted. Where is that? And so here on mounted, we're already subscribing to auth change. Um, so we know when it's state's change, and now we're gonna listen for data changes. Data changes. And uh, the way you do that is we are going to, well, one, we only wanna to listen to data changes if we actually have an authenticated user. So let's go down here and we'll put that inside here. And what we're gonna say is const, we're gonna get this unsubscribe, unsub, <clears throat> that we're gonna use that to clean up at the end. So we can say data store dot observe, and we're gonna observe our task object. And then what we wanna do is when we observe that task object, we're gonna say subscribe, and you get the message, which we don't really need, but we'll just get it anyway. And yeah, let's get the message so we can console log what's happening. MSG, keep it simple. And then down here, actually inside of the subscribe, when an event happens, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call our get data function. We should update the data in our UI and then Can I just put this like this and just ignore it completely? Let's just do that. We're gonna ignore the message. And then what we wanna do is we wanna take this unsubscribe and then we need to create a constant up here to hold it. But what we wanna do is um, we want to call that on unmount. Yeah, where's our un, un, unmounted? So here on our unmounted, we're gonna unsubscribe. So let's do this. Let's say if I have un unsubscribe subscribe is never reassigned use const okay so let's now that we're listening for data changes let's see if we can get this to work let's add a new object listening And you can see it got added, auto, got added automatically because we're listening for the changes. Okay, so now we're listening for data changes. What we wanna do next is we wanna add update and delete. So to add update and delete, let's first add the buttons for it. So we're gonna go into our list item here and we're gonna add some new buttons to handle updating and deleting. Okay, so now we have our edit and our delete buttons. Let's change this a bit, E-A-N-G-E-R. All right, there you go. And so when you show input here, we're passing the task in. Let's just make this clear. Task, TA, okay, data, task data, task data. And then we have this delete function. Let's go down and just put our delete function here on the end. Delete data, let's put it underneath here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we, well, let's just, let's just go ahead and put this in now because we're getting our payload and pay, sorry. Actually, let's just, why am I suddenly getting all this help? This is task data, any 
And then there's a data store function to actually just easily delete, delete, delete the data. So let's just add that in. And we're gonna do return await data store dot delete. And then we need to do it like this. We're gonna say delete task. And this is what I'm doing. I'm saying, and then what I'm saying, t equals t dot id equals, oh, sorry, t id eq eq dot task data dot id. Okay. So um, what it's saying here is delete this delete. We're looking for task object in, in the task object, delete a task object where the ID is equal to the task data ID. And so that's how we're going to delete our data. Since we are listening for changes, uh, let's just see if it works. So if I delete, you should see with date, date go away. So let's delete with date has gone away. Let's refresh to reload to make sure that's really gone. You can see with date has gone away, so my delete is working. And then now let's do the last one, which is actually editing the data. And remember, editing the data, what we said, if we look at our modal, let's go back up to our modal. Uh, where's our modal, our template? When we open this guy, we're passing into our entry form show modal data, right? So if you look at our edit button, when you click edit, we're passing task data into the show input modal. And so let's go down to our show input modal function. No, I didn't want to do that. Let's go to our show input modal function down here. Uh, where's our show input modal? Yeah, show input modal function. So we do actually have a value. So when we have a value, we set our value as the data. And then that data, as we said before, is getting passed in uh, to our entry form under initial data. So let's go back to our entry form. And you can see that here, um, if we have initial data, we're assigning it to form data, so it should appear in a UI. So let's just see if all that works. So now I don't want to click new. Let's edit this listening one. So let's edit listening was edit, edited. Description needs to be more descriptive. And we're going to say this is done now. So let's save it. So where did it go? Listening was edited. Description needs to be more descriptive. And so you can see it saved it. But let's, and then when you see it edited, it's got the start and depletion dates have been updated. The status has been updated. And everything worked the way we wanted it to work. And you also notice that it was updated automatically. Let's check, just let's check our sign out one more time. See if I can remember what my password was. And I'm logged in and I get all my data back and everything's good. And that's about what I want to cover for this video. Um, we saw how you're able to add, edit, and delete objects using um, Amplify. Um, the, there's probably two other things that I want to cover next is I want to uh, cover um, some sort of um, secure access so that right now at login as Aaron Saunders, I want to be able to make it so only Aaron can modify Aaron's data. So we'll go back into the admin console and show that how to work. And then the other thing is let's ju just, because we always need to show how to store blobs, we'll show how to store blobs in the uh, next video. So you'll be able to update a load a file um, along with the task. Um, so we'll cover that in the next video. Once again, please, if you like this content, like and subscribe. If there's something else you'd like to see, leave a comment. Um, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Bye.